right. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Eight Doctors workshop series with Mark Sims. My name is Nina Cabagio, and I use the pronouns of she and her. And today we have Mark Sims, of course, who will be doing our wonderful presentation. But before we start, I would like to start us off with a land acknowledgement. As a migrant myself, I truly honor the land that we're on and really thankful for the land that I'm on. And because the 519 is currently located downtown Toronto, I'll be doing the land acknowledgement for Toronto. And there are several land acknowledgement depending where you are as well. So we acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat people, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. I invite you all to to take this time to also reflect and take part in our desolation. So I would like us to have a couple of minutes just to think about it and to really reflect and really honor the land and the community, the indigenous community. Thank you, Nina. I hope all is well. I'm just going to, today we're looking at rest and sleep and the importance of rest and primarily sleep. So I'm looking more at the sleep than the rest. Now, this little fella, he looks really, <laughs> really comfortable, doesn't he? Well, I think that's how we need to be when we're, when we're sleeping. And hopefully we do get some sleep. So, so I wanna start off with some quotes and <laughs> I really enjoyed, well, you'll, hopefully you'll see my favorite one. Tired minds don't plan well. Sleep first, plan later. And it's funny because my wife always says that she'd prefer to go to sleep on time, wake up early, and then she's prime and ready to do any activity that she didn't finish the previous day. So this is this one, dear sleep, I'm sorry, I'm sorry we broke up this morning. I want you back. I'm sure most of us feel that way when we wake up in the morning. Oh, why are we up? Oh, I feel so tired. I'm so down. I need to go back to sleep. Well, there's a reason why that's happening. And sleep is like the goal, it's like the golden chain that binds our health and body together. And that's so important. And we're gonna see why that is as we go through this presentation. And then sleeping stabilizes blood sugar, reduces stress level, builds muscle, and brings a lot of happiness. And with that, we'll start. So the role of sleep on our overall health and well-being is becoming better understood from a scientific standpoint. And there are many proven health benefits of getting adequate sleep. So a lot of the, back in the day, people didn't really take the, the negative effects of lack of sleep, but over time they've come to realize how important sleep is. So sleep, they actually do research on, on sleep and see how people sleep and how it affects them either physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically. And so they're, they're studying this because they've now realized that sleep is very beneficial. So sleep. Well, adults need between seven to nine hours of, of proper sleep each night in order to function properly, in order to carry on through their day. And if you get less than six to seven hours of sleep, then you're actually setting yourself up for, for disease. So you're, you're, you're at risk of getting a disease if, you, if you're not getting seven to nine hours of sleep. If you get nine hours of sleep or more, it's actually not good for your body. So as an adult, so you wanna maybe think about the time that you're going to bed, how much sleep you're getting, 
And if you find that after nine hours of sleep, you're not feeling rested, then there's something going on. Either your, your, body, <clears throat> your body is not relaxing during that time period, or if you're waking up through the night, that's an indicator that something is off in your body. So you need to get that checked out. So that's when you come and see somebody like me and we would talk you through what's going on, find out where the imbalance is, and then would work towards getting a balance. The other thing that we need to look at is what type of sleep are you getting? If you are falling asleep, are you getting deep sleep? Are you getting into that REM sleep where your body is relaxed, where your body is, is calm, or if you're restless throughout the night? So sleeping is actually good for your heart. So it promotes heart health. And why that is, and a lot of the programs that I've done so far, it talks about all the different things that are heart healthy. So it just goes to show that even though we focus on, let's say, nutrition, and nutrition definitely, if you're having proper nutrition, you are getting a healthy and building a healthy and strong heart. But if you are not practicing sleep, even though you're getting your exercise and you're getting your nutrition, you're still messing up your heart health. So sleep is important. So the reason why sleep helps to exercise, sorry, not exercise, but sleep helps with heart health is because when you're sleeping, your body produces these hormones and these hormones help to relax bring your heart rate down and it helps your, your heart and your blood vessels to relax. And as they relax, your blood pressure also drops. So this way, it's, you're not getting that constant work on your heart. So getting proper sleep helps to reduce your, your you getting heart disease, which also includes a stroke. So get that sleep because it's very good for your heart. Sleep also helps to regulate your blood sugar. Now, how that happens is it, it will allows your body to, uh, the glucose drops. So your glucose is another name for blood sugar. So it drops and when it drops, it, it doesn't fluctuate. So when you're up for 24 hours, then that doesn't happen. So it doesn't get a chance to drop. It doesn't get a chance to reset itself. So you need that sleep in order for your glucose to drop and your body to, to reset. And then you'll have the necessary glucose to continue on throughout your day. So sleep also helps with relieving, alleviating stress. So Again, your body produces these chemicals that will bring the stress level down. But if you're not getting proper sleep, then you don't get that, that, chemical, in, that chemical to be released from your system. So you wanna make sure that you're getting proper sleep for that to happen. So you have the, these hormones that, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit later when it talks about weight, but these hormones help with your focus. Continuing, just go to the next one. So it helps with your focus. So when you are not sleeping, you're constantly thinking about things, and the your brain actually, when you're sleeping, it helps to put things in their proper order. So let's say, for example, throughout the day, you are thinking about a particular problem, and you didn't quite work it out. Well, while you're sleeping, your brain is actually processing, it's eliminating things, it's, it's putting things, it's like taking all the pieces to the puzzle and putting them together as you sleep. So what, that ends, up, what ends up happening there is, believe it or not, your brain has worked it out. So your subconscious has worked out all of the different issues that we're going on throughout the day. But if you're not getting proper sleep, then your brain doesn't get to do that. It doesn't produce that, that 
chemical that will help to relax everything for your brain to do all that work. Also, that energy that you need to actually go through your day doesn't get produced because the body didn't get that, that didn't get that sleep that it needed. So for weight loss as well. So when you don't get enough sleep, what happens, your brain produces these, these hormones, they're called leptin and ghrelin. And what they do, they help your body to realize it basically controls your appetite. And when you don't get proper sleep, your body doesn't produce these hormones. Therefore, you feel your appetite is increased, so you want to eat. Also, you don't feel motivated to do anything because your energy level has dropped, so you don't feel to exercise. Also, would affect how you how you perceive things. So, you don't want to exercise. You want to eat, and the foods that you want to eat are you're more drawn to junk food, the foods that will, will give you a burst in energy. And we talked about the foods that are, that give you a sugar rush. We talked about that in nutrition, but they give you eating those foods that will give you that spike, but you crash quickly as well. And you end up feeling worse than when you first started eating. So you wanna make sure that the sleep that you're getting, it will help you to maintain your weight because your brain and your body will be better able to function throughout the day. So before we do the, the poll, the other thing that sleep does, it helps with inflammation, believe it or not. So when you're sleeping, your, your body is also repairing, it's doing, if there are any, let's say for example, if you worked out really hard and what happens when you work out, especially if you're doing weights, the muscle fibers literally get, they tear and it helps to repair because just think of a snake as a snake sheds, new skin is formed. So that old skin is actually shedded so, so that the new skin, which is bigger, like the snake gets bigger. So it sheds and that new skin is now formed underneath where your muscle basically is the same. So what happens with the muscle fiber, they shed and underneath the new muscle, which is stronger and bigger, they're now taking place. But if you're not getting proper sleep, that action is actually minimized. It doesn't, it doesn't do what it needs to do and it doesn't do it properly. So the sleep actually helps that. You also, improving on your memory, sleep helps to improve your memory. So you get the sleep, again, remember the organizing of, uh, of all the different tasks that you had throughout the day. Also, studies have been done to show that sleep helps to improve people's condition who have Alzheimer's. So again, get that because it help you focus and you're more alert after sleeping. So get that sleep in, you get your energy level, you get, you're focused and you're better able to perform throughout your day. Nina, please, first of all. Sure, let me pull it up. Awesome, so question number one is how many, of, uh, how many hours of sleep do most adults need per day? A is 5 to 7, B is 7 to 9, C is 8 to 10, or D is 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. I say 7 to 9 hours. <laughs> 7 to 9 is correct. So most adults need between 7 to 9. So remember, also, if you're getting more than nine hours of sleep, or if you feel that you need more than nine hours of sleep, that's not mm -hmm. good. So too much of a good thing is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. I would have thought. 
question number two is what could happen if you frequently do not get adequate sleep? A is nothing. B is feeling a little tired. C is full of energy. Or D increased the risk of disease. What say you? I say D increased the risk of disease. Wow, I think you did this before. <laughs> <laughs> I love my teeth, Mark. <laughs> Maybe well, I take it too much sometimes too. But. Ooh. <laughs> well, you're right. If you if you if you don't get enough sleep, you are increasing the risk of disease. You're correct. And last question is. Which condition does sleep help improve? A is stress, B is inflammation, C improves memory, or D all of the above? Which condition does sleep help improve? And the answer is all of the above. All of the above. Awesome. Yes, so if you don't get enough sleep, you're looking at getting there's a drunk that's bothering me. <laughs> a, little, a little nap. You're looking at getting all of these conditions. And these are these are easy to avoid. So they're easy to do I say avoid or do I say easy to overcome? I'd say overcome. And the reason why, as simple as just getting sleep. And what does that look like? Ooh. All right, let's continue. So what is needed for a good night's sleep? Hmm. So minimize naps during the day. So if you have, let's say a 30 minute nap, that's fine. But if you are going for, let's say, an hour or two hours, then that will affect your sleep. That will affect your sleep through the night. Do not drink coffee or alcohol. And I'm going to change the, the sorry, caffeine, not coffee, caffeine. Do not drink caffeine or alcohol four to six hours before going to sleep. And the reason why, and it's interesting because some people say that drink, they drink coffee, for example, and that doesn't affect their sleep. And I'm, I'll be curious to actually check that out because I think it does to a certain degree. So the caffeine in the drinks, the alcohol, they, they disrupt your, your sleep pattern. So that's why you wouldn't want to drink those. Avoid screen light two to three hours, one to two hours before bedtime. I, my preference just came in there, <laughs> two to three hours. So anyway, so avoid screen light. So what that means is all the all electronic devices. So your phone, TV, even if you have a digital a digital alarm clock, you shouldn't have that in your room. And if you do, you should cover it. Your room should be fully dark. There should be no lights shining in your room because that will affect your, your sleep. So people who have night lights in their rooms, that is not a good thing. That has an impact, a negative impact on the, the quality of sleep that you're having. Spend the last hour before bedtime relaxing and unwinding. So reading a physical book, <laughs> listening to quiet music. So none of the, the head banging, the heavy metal stuff, because that will get your, your that will spike you, make you want to stay up. But listening to, let's say classical music or even some, um, some slow, methodical, calming music. Even if you, let's say even some people will stretch before bedtime because that will help to relax and I believe you, uh, you told me that you, you do yoga. Yoga also helps you to relax. 
Uh, so you could also journal. I know a lot of people who journal and that helps them to relax. But journaling also, aside from relaxing, it also helps to get the stuff that's in your head out. So you're putting it on paper. So you're not focusing on that before going to bed. And get 15 to 30 minutes of sunlight immediately upon waking or at sunrise. So depending on what time you get up, if you're waking up before the sun starts, before the sun rises, then you know it's not gonna work for you. But when the sun starts rising, go out and get that sunlight. That sunlight will help with your sleep later on because we talked about the sun and what the sun does and how it stimulates serotonin. And we talked about the mirror effect which is your melatonin. So without getting into any further detail, that's why you need that sunlight. So by doing all of these, so we talked about your room, make sure your room is fully dark and it being fully dark, you'll get proper sleep. So before we do the poll, let me, let me go on a bit more. So uh, you wanna make sure that all of your stressors too. So you wanna, as much stressors as you can get out of, your, out of your system before bedtime, the better. So if you've had an argument with someone and, and it's bothering you, try your best to resolve it before going to bed or trying to sleep before trying to sleep. If there is something that's, that's on your mind and you're trying to figure that out. So the, that's where the journaling really helps. I find that I don't journal because I don't really, I don't need that. I'm a very good sleeper. Whenever you can actually time me as my head is going down, I'll fall asleep before my head hits a pillow or a, a shift and then I'm out like a light. My wife always complains that, Mark, you sleep better than I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm a sleeper. So resolve, get all that stuff resolved and then that won't affect how you sleep. Go ahead, Nina. Right, let's go to poll number two and find it. Here it is. Cool. So first question is, what should you not do the last hour before bed? A, listening to relaxing music. B, workout exercise. C, turn off electronic devices. Or D, all of the above. Which one should you not do? I say workout or exercise. That's correct. When you work out before exercising, you actually, believe it or not, your, your body is pumping out um, cortisol because when you're exercising, you're actually uh, stressing the body. Exercise stresses the body. So your body pumps out cortisol to try and, and bring that body back to a restful state. But your, your body is height. So exercising does that. And some people, again, say that they can exercise with, and that makes them tired. But we're talking about the physiological effect of exercise on the body. And that's what's happening. So that's why it's not a good idea to exercise before that time. Next question. Question number two is how many hours before bed should you not drink? A is one to two, B is two to four, C is four to six, or D, it does not matter. Hmm. hmm. What do you think? This one was a bit tricky because I think it, uh, I think it's two to four. Two to four hours? I think so. You can get away with one to two, one to two hours before bed. But if you really want to ensure that you don't uh, you don't have interrupted sleep, then two to four. And the reason why, so you want to make sure that first of all you're drinking throughout the day. So most people, when they feel the need to drink a lot at night, it's because they haven't they haven't drunk throughout the day. So their body at nighttime is dehydrated. So they're, they're chugging 
chugging water because they need to hydrate themselves. So what they needed, what they should have been doing, they should have been sipping or drinking water throughout the day. So let's say, for example, you have two cups every two hours or every hour and a half. If, if you want to be methodical like that, or you could just be sipping water throughout the day. And this way, when it's time for bed, you don't feel thirsty. So that thirsty is an indicator that you're dehydrated. So you're not feeling thirsty. So therefore you can go straight to bed. Some people can get away with drinking an hour to two hours before bed and that doesn't impact their sleep. So they're not getting up to use the bathroom. Some people, they can't do that. I'm one of those people that, you know what, I don't even know because I don't drink that late. So I don't even know. But if my wife is a person that if she drinks an hour to two hours before bed, then she will be getting up to use the bathroom. So it depends on, on the individual. But I would say it shouldn't be anything less than one hour before bedtime, just to make sure that you're not, your sleep is not being interrupted. And then the last question is true or false? It is fine to take long naps during the day. And what's the answer to that one? I like to say true, but it. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, no, no, it's not good to take long naps throughout the day. It's not good. It interrupts your quality of sleep. Okay, thank you very much. So the benefits of sleep. So we talked about how it boosts your immune system. So again, when you're sleeping, your body is actually doing its repair. It's also building up the immune system. And, and what's happening is it, the hormones that actually support your immune system are being produced. And helps with mental well-being. So we talked about how those use that chemical and a chemical. So we talked about serotonin for exercises, but sleeping also helps with that as well. And so for brain functioning, the next day you won't feel fatigued. You won't feel, you won't feel foggy brain. You'll actually be energized and you'll be able to make snappy decisions. So it affects your, your executive function. So it also helps with your memory. And then it helps with support long your lifespan. So again, if you're not sleeping, so you're looking at the risk of disease. So that will shorten your life. And boost fertility. When I saw that, I said, hmm, interesting. But it makes sense because once again, your body is going through repair and rejuvenation. So I can see where that comes into effect. And we talked about the weight gain with the, the hormones, the chemicals being um, leptin and ghrelin, ghrelin, and how that helps to manage your appetite. And sleep also helps with creativity. I can't say that I'm very creative, but for those who are, it helps with creativity. My daughter, she's very creative. So she's all over the map. And if she got more sleep, she'd be even more creative. Too bad she's not on to hear this. All right. And then we talked about the, keeping the heart healthy. And how it does that is by lowering your blood pressure and allowing your heart and your blood vessels to be in a more relaxed state and it reduces inflammation. So your cells, if, it, if, if you're getting enough sleep, your cells actually get a chance to ward off inflammation. Inflammation, when the cells are on fire and not literal fire, when they're, they're bombarded with free electrons, inflammation occurs. So sleep will actually help to promote those antibodies and 
your antioxidants to actually take control of those, those electrons. And last but not least, getting proper sleep allows you to have a glowing skin. So you're looking very radiant and healthy and all of your systems are functioning as they should. And that's it for today. And see the here's where the Q&A would pop in. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mark, for that wonderful presentation. I like it as well, along with the rest of the workshops that you've been working on. But I think this one's probably one of my favorites because I love sleep. I love my sleep. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. But are you getting the right amount of sleep? I, or are you overdoing your sleep? I'm actually getting the right amount of sleep. Just and are you going to bed? Are you going to bed at, at the right time? Or are you, we, what we didn't talk about, and I should have mentioned also that your sleep time should be no later than 11 p.m. If you're going to bed past that, then that's a problem. So apparently our bodies, anytime before midnight, we actually get it's actually it actually doubles. So if you're if you're going to bed at say at eleven o'clock, it's as if you're going to bed at eight. No, no, nine, nine o'clock. It's actually going to bed at nine. I just lost my math for a minute there. So it doubles. So you're actually getting for the amount of time you're getting your body's actually getting more relaxing sleep. But you need to make sure that you're getting it before that time. Now in Chinese medicine, it actually shows what organs are being being detoxified with the with the clock. So, for example, between one and three a.m. in the morning, that's when our liver is actually going through its cycling period. So, just think about think about your um, your your washing machine, and when you want it, when it's going through the wash cycle and then it goes to the rinse. And each time it does, it, it empties the water. So from the wash, it's soapy water. So it flushes it out. And then fresh water comes in and goes to the rinse cycle, flushes it out, and then it goes to the spin cycle. Well, our liver and each organ, as a matter of fact, goes through, depending on what time it is, it's going through a similar system. So our liver, and I, I love talking about the liver. The liver is like, woohoo! because the liver does over 500 functions. And so between one and three, the liver then goes through where it's taking all the toxins and it's flushing it out and it's repairing any damage that's been done to it. And it's rebuilding and repairing itself. And then when you get up in the morning, your liver says, I'm prime and ready to go. Whereas, if we don't go to bed the next day, the liver, oh, I didn't get to cycle. And now I'm being overburdened with all the other things. So everything from what you eat and drink to the, what we smell, to what's going into our pores, the liver is filtering that. So what we don't even know where the body's filtering is happening. But if we're not getting the sleep for it to cycle through, then we're not supporting those organs. So it's very important. Mm. Very interesting. So what time do you go to bed at night? What time do you go to bed? I'm going to put you on the spot. <laughs> on average. 11. 11. Okay. Then. And are you one of these people that fall asleep instantly or do you... No. Um, okay, well, let me rephrase that actually. I'm in bed by 10 p.m. and I think I snooze off around 11. Okay, then that's fine. So if you're in bed by 10, so do you put away the, the electronic devices or are you or, or are you on the electronic device while you're in bed? Sure. <laughs> sure. That's <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. 
Yes. So what I want to do, I want to get to the, the, to the level where I actually turn off my Wi-Fi because the Wi-Fi, the electromagnetic frequencies also affect your, your system. So I want to turn off, turn that off. I'm not there yet. I'm working on that. But I don't sleep with, we don't have a TV in our room and we don't sleep with us with a phone or any electronic device with the exception of the clock. And my wife tried to get rid of the clock, but she bought a, a wind up clock. The tick, tick, tick will bother her throughout the night. So no. So, but it's on its, its lowest setting. So it doesn't, it doesn't illuminate brightly. And our room is dark. And especially where we live, we don't have street lights. So we don't have any light pollution, which is a bonus. So if you do have street lights, then putting a blind, putting a blind up to prevent that light from coming in, because it's very important. The, to have it as dark as possible is very important because that really helps to put you into that REM sleep and that uninterrupted REM sleep, deep sleep. Any questions? Okay, so that is it on sleep and rest. Well, we didn't really talk about rest, but rest, when somebody rests, they're, they're more, not that they're sleeping, they're, they're, their mind is at ease. And whenever I think about rest, I think about somebody sitting on a mountain, just looking at the scenery or your grandparents sitting on the porch in a rocking chair and they're just rocking back and forth. And they're just either talking or just enjoying each other's company in silence. They're just looking out. So rest is to me, it's your state of mind where you're at peace in that, in that moment. It's not that life doesn't have things that are bombarding you. It's just that you've decided to not allow life and its negativity or its challenges to impact you at that particular time. So it'd be important, it's important that we actually take time to rest throughout the day. So for me, and especially now, during this, this time of COVID, my rest is going to the garden and working with the plants and helping to the growth process. And my friend always says to me, or my wife will tell me also, why don't you have the kids come and help? And I say, no, no, that's my quiet time. I'm communing, <laughs> I'm communing with nature. It's my time and it's a lot of work. And sometimes I really, really want the help, but I think if they come, oh, so I prefer to do it on my own. Unless I can put a muzzle on them and keep them quiet. <laughs> but that won't work, that won't work. Cause they'll still be, yeah. so no, I, won't, I can't do it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Mark for this wonderful evening about rest and sleep. And now I think we're also getting to that time that we all need to rest and sleep. So okay. I, till next time, everybody, we will see you again, Mark. We still have two more weeks. Right, yes, I don't know what month of August we are in, what day of August we're in right now. But we still, we have Mark until the end of August. So come on and join us for the Eight Doctor series with Mark. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. You. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Nina.